Okay, so by now we should have our rendered sequence ready to composite. So let's jump into Blackmagic Fusion and have a look at what we can do. So it's worth noting at this point that I'm using Fusion 16 um, and I'm also using the Reactor plugin that you can get from stakeunderwater.com. Um, it's a community uh, built plugin uh, full of lots of really useful nodes and it's free. So I recommend you get this because we are going to be using some of the tools that are in this uh, reactor package and when you have it installed you get um, this reactor uh, option here where you can open up reactor we can grab a couple of nodes here to install so you can see like I've installed the denoiser clean flow cryptomap you'll need cryptomap because we'll be using that depth of focus edge blur exponential glow grade split exr is a useful one so there's quite a few in here. It's worth having a look and seeing what's available. Well, there's a lot that I haven't even tried out really, but there's a lot of useful ones. I quite like this one, the uh, uh, Chroma Fuse. It's quite useful for um, graphic aberration. So worth getting. And now let's start loading in our renders. So if you're new to Fusion, uh, to load your renders, you want to create a loader node. So if you hit tab on your keyboard and type in loader, you can create a loader node and then go to where your files of your renders are, which will be, if you've um, followed along, it should be in your images folder um, in your Maya directory. And so you'll be in the beauty and then you can just grab your renders. Um, and let's take a look and see what they look like. So you can see we've got our, our beautiful height fields here. Um, you'll notice that they look a lot darker than they did in Maya. That's because we were in the wrong color space. So to rectify this, let's throw down a gamut node and feed that into our render. And to view these in your, your viewport, you just click and drag them into the viewport. Gamut needs to, the, the output space needs to be changed to sRGB. So now you can see we've got a proper color space now and it looks just as it did in Maya. Um, it's worth noting at this point that if you are, if this, if you had it like a sky that you were going to replace here, because at the moment we're just looking down, so there's nothing to, we don't have any edges to worry about. But if we have any edges to worry about, say we're adding a sky or anything, it's good practice to throw down an alpha divide. <clears throat> and this node is the same as a pre mock node, or un pre mock node rather, in Nuke. And this will help us preserve our edges. So what this will do is, um, when you are performing a gamut operation on these, uh, your render, let's say you have a bunch of edges from your height fields, and if you add this gamut, you'll change the um, values of your alpha of the edges of the, um, like the edges, uh, basically your ed edge values will change, and so you'll get white edges when you start adding things in your background, like back to the sky or whatever. Um, but to because we've divided it, it means that it will be unaffected by our gamut node. <clears throat> and once we throw down a multiply, basically this restores the edge values to what they were before we did our any of our color corrections here. So with that, that's that's a good starting point really with any of your comps. So and then any other color corrects, you'll just drop them in here. Um, to spare the alpha essentially. So now we've um, had a quick look at that, it's a good idea to have a look at our Z depth pass. So <clears throat> let's go over to our, our loader and go over to the channels. And in the channels, you'll see that we've got a Z already loaded in here. So the way we access that is we'll create a Luma Kia node. And if you, if you're, if you like what's happened here, if it's been created in your flow, just hold shift and pull the node out and that will bring it out of the node tree. So feed the Luma key into your render and take a look at the node. Now, this isn't right. So we need to go over to our channel and change this to depth. Okay, so still no sign of our depth. That's because we need to select our near and far planes. Now, because this is, an Arnold render, these two are actually inverted. So if you select your, your near plane, actually select it as your far plane. So let's just grab the furthest value we can here. And then the far plane becomes the near plane. So let's grab the closest one. So now you can see we've got 
a depth effect here. And then in order to use this as our mask, we're going to need to use a channel boolean node. So there's two of these. Don't use this one, the three boolean. This is this is for the three D tools. Ch throw down the channel booleans. This one, and pipe this little the yellow um, pipe into your Luma Kia, and then take a look. Now again, nothing's changed. It's because we need to change all of these channels. Just change them all to alpha foreground, alpha FG, and so now we've got our depth mask and then one other trick we can use with this actually is if we throw down a bitmap node then and break that connection there and use the yellow again pipe it in if you have a look at the bitmap node you see that we can see like all of the values here and using the um, the channel controls we can enhance the effect of the depth pass if we want so that's quite useful um, so what we're going to use this for is creating some depth in our scene. So if we have a look at our render, it just is very flat. You know, we've got our lighting, but you don't have the sense of atmosphere that you would get if you were shooting something this high up. So we need to create a color correct node. Type in CC, and get a color corrector node, and drop it into your node graph, and use this blue tab. The blue ones are masks. So take this mask from your bitmap, and now. Let's drop the contrast quite a bit. And you see now we're already getting this feeling of, of, of depth and atmosphere. And you also want to drop your saturation a little bit. Um, because the, 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 the effect of the atmosphere is, you know, you look to the distance and there'll be less saturation, sort of hazy look. Um, and because of the effect of the atmosphere, it might also be slightly tinted. So let's go to kind of a blue tint maybe. And... Um, with to simulate kind of light scattering or at least to assume it let's just play around with the lift a little bit so let's lift it ever so slightly and maybe drop the contrast a little bit more so this is um it's looking quite good we've got a nice this feeling of depth i think perhaps it might be nice to just push this a little bit more so let's just see what it looks like if we push our maybe the other way i want to have more yeah bit more haze and if we go back to our lumic here maybe we can bring our near plane closer as close as we can get it just have a look at that again i want to get this this looking hazy as well really or as hazy as we can get it just so then we can have this nice focal point here um so let's see if we can push that a little bit more with the bitmap Yeah, something like that. Um, it's a good starting point anyway. So um, in the next lesson, we'll have a quick look at how we can set up our crypto mat and use that to mask our trees.